very sí, good round, just ritmo, like that, with that esa, rhythm, with that confidence, he's already getting a little bit frustrated, that's why he was out of uh, condition, you're, you're punishing him, now his nose is starting to bleed, look at Manuel Navarrete, just chilling with that blazer, no shirt, the, hat's in, the hat and the uh, shades are off, but he's focused on this, his fourth world title defense, or second world title defense at 126 pounds, 8-0 with six knockouts in world championship fights. And you talk about a guy, Tim, who came from nowhere to be a two-division champion. Yes, he did. I mean, when he was facing Dog Bay some years back, and I <laughs> I was high on Dog Bay then at that point, and I thought Dog Bay was going to get the job done, but he came in there and did his thing against Dog Bay and then ran it back and did it again. You speak about Dog Bay, well, that's the last name, but we saw Joet Gonzalez there with his dog, his French bully Lilo. <laughs> so it was a perfect lead into what we're seeing right here on our screen. So those are the two main event fighters. There's a title at stake and you see Delgado with the 37% accuracy, 31 of 84 so far through the first six minutes of this fight. Juan Mendez coming out aggressive here in round number three. Yep. Change the tempo. That's important. You know, a lot of times you see a guy fight at the same pace. Beautiful check look right there. From Delgado. It's but beautiful. Mendez can only do that in spurts. He can't keep that up for the duration of a round. So Delgado's doing the right thing. He weathers the little storm. He minds his defense, gets back to the center, center of the ring, and then picks up where he left off. There's that step and pop that we've seen from Lindolfo Delgado using his jam jab effectively here and there you see it once again and even though you don't want delgado looking for the knockout the goal is to stop a guy like mendez make no mistake about it but you do it progressively and i want to see him slowly pick this up and step up the pace in this fourth fifth sixth round and try to get this stoppage well the body is the where mendez is starting to pay most of his attention so guess what's open the uppercut right up the middle if I'm Delgado, I'm looking for... <laughs> Left uppercut, barely missed from Lindolfo Delgado, but goodness. Just as you were saying, it was there. He went for it. Tim sounded like he got here with that body shot. Man, I'm just saying, it was sweet when he just turned it Did up when I feel it? it. Yeah, Did it was sweet. It? <laughs> I saw the sweat flying, I'll tell you that much. I don't know if it landed, but I just know it looked sweet when he turned it up on him. It's a good shot. You know, we talk about ring generalship, and Robert Garcia was mentioning in the corner. Continue with that confidence you're showing in the ring. It's that body language that means so much. Like, hey, you do what you're going to do, but I'm in control. Yep, in control. I'm the big dog. You know, you learn that inside the gym. Right, and body language is always key, but it's also mentally recognizing when this guy doesn't need to be in the ring anymore. And Mendez is posing as if he wants to do something, and he does have spurts, but he can't deal with Delgado, and he can't win a shootout. So I would like to see, once again, Delgado slowly start to step this up. Mendez has 13 knockouts and 21 victories. His four losses, they've all been against unbeaten fighters with a combined record of 52-0-2. So... You have to be on your game to beat Juan Mendez. He's a journeyman, but he's tough. Yeah, the right hand's available for him as well. Then Dolfo, Delgado, leaving that left side exposed. Getting a little cocky right now, feeling himself. Got to be careful. Mendez dropping low and sneaking him over the top. Well done, Lindolfo. Very beautiful work. That's how I want you to do it. He's getting a little desperate here. Don't let him gain any confidence or momentum. Don't let him get at you. Even if it's just one shot at a time, make sure you make him pay. Just touch him. Just make him understand he's got no chance against you. You're going to okay. make him, or you're going to go him into making more mistakes. When you got a chance, though, when he gets close on you, land that uppercut, or the right uppercut. Or hit him right here in the chest, right in the body, or the liver shot. The right you're landing well to the body, but also look for that left, and then finish up with the looping left over the top. Throw the body shot, the left to the liver, and then follow it up with the left hook upstairs. All right, Dre, what would you think of the instructions? I thought they were right on point. I mean, obviously, you know, Robert Garcia is in tone with his fighter. Um, 
I probably expected him to to ask Delgado to step it up a little bit more, but I think essentially that's what he's saying. Be smart, but when you have an opportunity, take advantage of it. There's a nice counter left hand from Lindolfo Delgado, who's on his feet, moving and setting up offense. I think one thing we have to understand is Delgado has, this is his 14th fight, so he's still evolving, he's still finding himself, he knows he has power, he's with the new team, he's around guys like Mikey Garcia, he's seeing how Mikey boxes and sneaks big shots in there, so he's still evolving right before our eyes. His style is not set yet. Yeah, you talk about a, a guy getting quality rounds against Virgil Ortiz, Mikey Garcia, and all the more tires in that gym. Mm. There you see the double left hand from Lindolfo Delgado, the big right. Going to work. You see him step around out of the corner as well. Good yeah. work. Just beautiful work from Delgado. Mendez is trying to sell that he's not hurt, but he is. Look at that uppercut. Mm. And the overhand right. Can I, I mean, get, it's all working for him. Can we get a? Can I get a two piece or three piece? Something. See, you see, you're landing shots one shot at a time. Your pop shot. And that's great. Get the combinations. That's when the hurt comes. There's that left to the head and then the right to the body from Lindolfo Delgado. There's that stick once again, pop and move from the fighter out of Monterrey, Nuevo Leon. Got a big ranch out there with his family. See, what Delgado's doing, he's letting Mendez help him. He's letting him make mistakes, and then he's there to make him pay. That's exactly what Robert Garcia asked him. He said, look, you keep pot-shotting him, he's going to have to get frustrated, he's going to take risks, and that's where you take advantage of him. So it's all kind of played out how Robert saw it. Listen, Delgado can do whatever he wants to do at this point. I'm not saying get reckless, but I'm saying you can step it up, let your hands go. Yeah, Mend Mendez is going to throw back, but catch him inside of those shots. Be willing to exchange to get that big shot through. Agreed. It's a time and a place to box, and it's a time and a place to recognize that the guy in front of you should no longer be in front of you. See, I don't know if you guys recognize it, but Mendez doesn't fight well going backwards. He fights well coming forward. Delgado was pressing forward with combinations. Had him bewildered just like now, and now he's pressing forward. He just busted up his so, nose. So what I'm saying is Delgado needs to recognize that, and this is where maturity comes in that. Recognize that and put more pressure like Dre is asking for. All right, speaking about pressure, there's been a lot of pressure for Terrence Crawford to take on a big name opponent. You see the blood flowing there on Mendez. He has that opportunity come November 20th at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas on ESPN Plus pay per view. Crawford Porter, first thought, guys, what do you got, Tim? I, I, I ain't got nobody. I, this is one of the fights where I'm going to stay neutral. I love know both guys. I respect both fighters, but I can just tell you this. This fight is going to be tough. This is a 50-50 fight. I don't care what anybody say. It's a 50-50 fight. Sean Porter is tough for anybody in the division. Yeah, every now and again you get one of those can't-miss fights, and this is a can't-miss fight. This fight is going to be a great fight. Both of these guys are extremely competitive. They have a lot to gain and a lot to lose. And, and they've proven themselves in the past, and the night that they fight will be no different. The losses that Porter has on his career, they've come against your Denny Sugas, who's the current WBA champion who just beat Manny Pacquiao. He lost to uh, Keith Thurman in a great fight, and he lost to Errol Spence. As close as a fight could be, and it was defined by a late knockdown. And I mean, when you talk about taking on the best and giving them all they can handle, that's the epitome of Sean Porter's career. Oh, he did not lose to Ugas, but that was a very close fight. No, he didn't lose to Ugas. He boxed very well. And He's that, a those throwback, are the, fellas. Yeah, those are the He's dimensions. a throwback. Yep, those yeah. are the dimensions that he shows over his career, Dre. No, absolutely. And it's just, it's not a lot of throwback fighters, even the way Sean trains. It's a throwback style. It's the way him and his father, Kenny Porter, train. It's just a throwback, you know, and he knows that he's got to fight top guys to get top money and to be considered a great fighter, and he's willing to take on those challenges one after another.
Beautiful work right there with defense, using his legs to get out of range to make those shots miss from Mendez. Delgado doing a little bit of everything tonight. Well, I think the good boxing and the good defense from Delgado was the table setter. I think now it's time to eat. From Robert Garcia, I'm telling Delgado, come behind that strong power jab that you have. Keep your defense tight. Put twos and threes together. I guarantee you something's going to get through. When you hurt him, take a step back, take a deep breath, assess him, and go back to work, and let's get out of here. That long right from Lindolfo Delgado finding a spot right on the nose of Mendez. That was bleeding profusely as he went back to the corner at the end of round number four, and it's starting to leak now. And you can hit a fighter like Mendez all night upside the head. But trust me, you hit him down to that body, especially with the power that Delgado has. It's going to have a big effect. And credit to Mendez for being tough and taking those shots and still looking to land his own shots. Because you can see him thinking. He hasn't landed the shot that he wants to land, but he's trying. And you see Delgado pushing Mendez backward, as Tim was mentioning. He can't fight going back, and that's exactly where Lindolfo has him on the back foot. Mendez doesn't have much to offer, but one, maybe two punches if Delgado stands still. It's okay to go forward. It's okay to make Mendez open up and use his God-given power to land one of those big shots. Lindolfo misses there at the end, but he hasn't missed much tonight, especially when he's trying to throw off the counter. Look, we, throw, we call this the shutdown. You want to shoot a jab? Okay, right hand over the top. No problem. You want to shoot the jab again for two goals? Right hand over the top. No problem. Oh, you want to step in and you want to lunge? Oh, I got a left hook for you. <laughs> no problem. Beautiful counters from Delgado. Mendez is doing everything he can to get close. Try to hit Delgado. Delgado's just too smooth tonight. He's on his A game. He's looking brilliant in this performance tonight. You're looking good. Don't make any mistakes. Continue with that same mentality of the instructions from Roger, Robert Garcia or Lindolfo Delgado. And Tim, you said it's the shutdown in California. You don't say that word. <laughs> yeah, right. It's 2021, bro. <laughs> All right, round six of a scheduled eight-rounder. Lindolfo Delgado taking on Juan Mendez, Bernardo Osuna, Timothy Bradley, and Andre Ward. And the numbers don't lie. 40% accuracy for Delgado to 15% for Mendez. It's not just that, Dre. It's the power behind those shots and the intent from Delgado that are making a difference. Yeah, and he's not even throwing hard. I don't think he's throwing his hardest shot tonight. Again, they just land, they just land hard. It's God-given ability that he has, and he's also grown in his placement of the shots, where he lands the shot. That's why he's been so effective tonight. Accuracy's been on, accuracy's been on point two, like that uppercut. And here is the flurry that we've been expecting all night long. You heard him with the shot to the body, then the uppercut, and you see. Mendez leaking once again from that nose. And Delgado has a target in mind. Mm, it's that body. You know, young fighters got to vary their combinations. They don't vary them. Head and body. Throw different combinations. Sometimes they use the same hand just like that. To land two body shots, three body shots. Be creative. Do things that fighters are not accustomed to. Triple right hand there from Lindolfo Delgado. How, how often do you see that? Rarely. Rarely, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. That's exactly my point. Good Delgado, I don't think you look for the home run shot. I just think you have a steady rain on the head and body of Mendez. And something will get through. Mendez keeps coming forward. And Lindolfo Delgado just waiting on a big counter shot when Mendez opens up. Big right uppercut there from Lindolfo Delgado. 
That's exactly what he was waiting for. Waiting for Mendez to commit, and then he makes him pay. As he goes down to the body after going to the right upstairs. It's a punishing fight from Delgado. It's target practice. See Mendez not responding as well in these later rounds as he did in the earlier rounds. So that means that the punishment is starting to soak in. single right hand down the line you want to get your head off to the left it's exactly what Delgado did right there as Mendez was throwing his right hand just a very impressive performance from the Golfo Delgado in the boxing sense and you don't expect that from a Mexican fighter who's a power puncher but Dre it's all about the skill that he's putting on this play tonight that's most impressive from Delgado yeah, you have to respect it. He's showing so many different looks, and he's showing you that he's using his brain, not just his bronze. And we see right here, he's looking, looking, trying to set up a shot. And as soon as Mendez reaches, Delgado teaches with that counter right hook that lands right on the chin of Mendez. Here we see another angle. He's looking, looking, processing, took a step back, got out of range, and then made sure he was in range to land that beautiful right hand. Let's just go to the liver now. Don't stop using that jab. Hop with it. Touch him all over the place. Upstairs, downstairs. Set up that left uppercut. You feel good? Yes. All right, let's go, man. Two more rounds. We always talk about Mexican style. Canelo always said, what is Mexican style? If this could be the Mexican style, I'm all for it. <laughs> Delgado is really putting on a solid performance tonight here against Juan Mendes. Ooh, nice right uppercut from Delgado. Using Mendez's aggression against him. Exactly. He's been doing that all night. And he also can get some, get some more offense when he's moving forward. Put Mendez on the back foot. Lindolfo Delgado showing quickness, showing accuracy. That counter right. The left hook was a waste punch from Delgado just to hit the guard of Mendez to see if he could open him up to land a bigger, better shot. Ooh, nice right uppercut once again. It's been there for him all night, and now he's leading with it. Ala and Manuel Navarrete. <laughs> it's a little bit more polished than yeah, yeah. that. <laughs> what you think you saying he's not throwing it from no man's land Dre? no man's land it's a little tighter than a lot tighter than Navarrete. Well, yeah. well he ain't got that 72 inch reach like Navarrete either That's <laughs> 68 against 68 from Mendez so it's not that same advantage nice it's right a good shot though that uppercut that lead uppercut is a good punch to, to bring a left hook behind uh, thank Delgado. you thank you clean up crew Choo -choo. bring him in oh it's just one shot at a time, I'm telling you. Mendez is taking these shots very well. He sees them coming. He's been taking them all night. You put a two behind it, maybe you might have some more uh, more effect. Again. Delgado doesn't have to close, but if I'm Robert Garcia, I'm asking him to close because he can do it against Juan Mendez. So why not? Hey, what you got to understand? Mendez. Go ahead, Dre. Well, sorry. I'm bro. sorry, Jimmy. Right there from Lindolfo, measuring him by the same standards that we would ask of Shakur Stevens. And if you've got a guy who's overmatched, you got to get him out of there. There's that big right hand from Lindolfo Delgado. He follows up once again. 
with a three-piece right combination against Juan Mendes. All right, we have a great action coming up tonight. Our co-main event features Giovanni Santillan from San Diego, California, taking on power puncher Angel Ruiz. We're going to have the rivalry of two great Mexican-American trainers, Robert Garcia against Manny Robles. We'll see how that one plays out. That leads up to our main event, Emmanuel Navarrete, who defies boxing standards, doing things his way. He'll be taking on a man who is his same size, who's just as hungry, in Joet Gonzalez. He's only one of eight current champions from Mexico, and he owns the highest knockout percentage on that list with 83%. He's Emmanuel Navarrete with 29 knockouts in 34 victories. So it's a fight that we're looking forward to in tonight's main event right here in San Diego. Vingolfo Delgado and Juan Mendez shake hands in the middle of the ring for this eighth and final round. Let's see if Delgado can close the show or if Mendez can pull a rabbit out of the hat. Delgado needs to close the distance. That's what he needs to do. He's catching Mendez out at, out at bay anytime he wants to, but if he closes the distance on him, throw the uppercut right up the middle, bring those elbows in and come around and get the liver shot that Garcia's been calling for, he making in this fight. If, Del if Delgado wants to get Mendez out, he can get him out of it. He just has to put his hands together, both hands, so the body and the head, just like you said, Tim. And again, it's an expectation for a fighter of his caliber. If he didn't have that caliber, he was similar to Mendez, maybe you wouldn't ask for him to step it up like this. You'd be okay with him coasting to a win. But if he can do it, you should ask for it. Young fighters should be challenged on the way up. Absolutely. He's got the talent to do it. He's got the opponent to do it. Juan Mendez, he's tough. Just as we saw in our last fight, just how tough Daryl Jones was against Javier Martinez. Mendez could take a shot, but Tim, you pointed to this very early on. The lack of body work from Delgado is probably the reason why Mendez is still standing across from him. Yeah, that, very, that may very well be so. You know, Delgado's landing some vicious shots up top. I would have loved to see him invest him a little bit more to the body as he does there. But overall, I mean, I think his, his, his performance is great tonight, honestly. You know, I, I always worry about a puncher coming into a fight, just depending on his punch. Delgado showing that he can box, he can move. He has more facets to his games than a normal, than a regular non-puncher. And here he goes after Juan Mendez. There he digs to the body, he lands a nice right hand, and down goes Juan Mendez after that combination. Yes, sir. You want to continue? Raise your hand. 30 seconds to finish the show for Lindolfo Delgado. He goes right back to work as he pins Mendez against the rope. Now he's in the middle of the ring and he says, get to work. Throw punches from the referee and he does just that and clips Lindolfo Delgado with the left hook. Delgado trying to put a punctuation mark on a really solid performance here. Lining up a big right as he does there. But it looks like Mendez is going to end this fight on his feet. And deservedly so. They both show respect as Lindolfo Delgado puts on quite a performance. Guys, I think I've seen it all tonight from Delgado. Beautiful check left hooks. Beautiful right hand counters. You know, great defense. Responsible with his defense. Keeping his hands up. I saw some great movement footwork from him. He showed that he has not one, but two, but three gears. He didn't get the victory. I mean, he didn't get the stoppage. But I can tell you this. He was almost near that stoppage at the end of that last round. Yeah, and that right hand, that straight right to the body is what caused all that trouble. The body work, which you were calling for, Tim, all night long. 
You know, Delgado is a is a great talent. I think he's got great things up ahead. And uh, I want to see him against better competition because I think with the better competition, we're going to see better performances from Delgado. Yeah, Lindolfo Delgado's got a bright future. He's trained by Robert Garcia, managed by Rick Rigian. And uh, he came in with solid opposition. His last five opponents had won 74% of their bouts. At this stage of his career, they had an 85 27 and 3 record in 115 fights so he hasn't been matched easily and every step that he takes is in the right direction and and you know Dre said it right when you have this kind of talent there's expectations and he didn't finish him but he went after him and he tried to get the finish and then you got to give Lindolfo Delgado credit for that as Mark Chinook is in the center of the ring with the decision Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds here inside Pechanga Arena, San Diego, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Edward Hernandez, Lou Moret, and Patricia Morse Jarman all scored the bout 80 to 71. For your winner by unanimous decision, Lindolfo Delgado. 14 and 0 with 12 knockouts as a pro. A solid win for Lindolfo Delgado. He had to work against Juan Mendez, and he gets the big victory. The, the sport coat is off. Navarrete is ready to fight. Will he throw almost 50 power punches per round against Joe Gonzalez? That remains to be seen tonight. My name is Giancarlo Esposito, and I'm preparing to bring you my most monstrous villain yet. Anton Castillo in Far Cry 6. Do you know what you're getting into? Taking on Anton, fighting on the side of the gorilla? While I've confronted some formidable foes in my time, I now face someone entirely new. You, buy it now, or else. Play it on the all new Xbox. This is so crispy, juicy, and tender, you might even call it deluxe. Okay. Now you can definitely call it Deluxe. McDonald's Deluxe Crispy Chicken Sandwich. With over 200 flavor notes to discover, every sip of Woodford Reserve bourbon is a spectacle for the senses. Emmanuel Navarrete is preparing to be the main event fighter this evening as he's looking to defend his featherweight belt against Joette Gonzalez. He's 34-1 with 29 knockouts. That last victory came on April 24th at the Silver Spurs Arena in Kissimmee, Florida. Let's pick the fight up at the start of round nine so you can see what Navarrete is all about. There's no tomorrow. Right now, there's only the start of a ninth round. But how much more can Diaz take? He was hurt badly in that eighth round. Down twice. Navarrete has landed 28 power punches in that eighth round. His high total so far in this fight. But that day coming off a round where he had a lot of offensive output, he'll probably try to take this round off and land something sneaky. He's recharging, Dre. That's what he's doing, recharging. Nelson Rodriguez just told me, look, Christopher is a puncher. We've got a puncher's chance, but he's got to do this, and he can't stand in front of Navarrete. He is now choosing to get back on his bike. Navarrete is too strong in the inside for him. He's facing that lead left uppercut. <laughs> He's looking to line it up, Tess. I'm telling you. My man Navarrete got a high IQ. Good combination from Diaz. When he had a motor opportunity, he took it, and Navarrete comes firing right back. Team Diaz is running out of game plans. They started off boxing. That didn't work. They went inside, that didn't work. And now, Coach Nelson Rodriguez is calling for his fighter to go back outside. 
Navarrete has had an answer for everything that Diaz has tried to do. Everything. He has scored three knockdowns tonight. It's nights like this where you come to grips with how bad you really want it. I don't think it's a desire thing with Diaz. It's, he doesn't have oh. any answers. Oh my goodness. It's Look at this combination. Right Just doesn't have any answers. It's that offense, Dre. That's what it is. That offense. That's heavy leather right there. Throws himself off balance. Knocked himself down. Throws himself <laughs> off balance just by the roaring wave of offense that he produces. Remember, Bernardo talked about the damaged knee in training camp, and you see him wearing that brace, so who knows how his support is when he does get thrown off to that left side. Got to keep an eye on that. Diaz with an opportunity and placed a right hand in the midst of those punches. He's got heart. You look at his face, and you look at what Mike Basil, the cut man, had to deal with after that eighth round, and he comes out and still is game. We heard the champ's cousin, his trainer, 39-year-old Pedro Navarrete, who is a former pro fighter himself, pro fighter who suffered 22 losses in his career, but he's been a very good trainer with his cousin. Say, how do you feel? And the champ just gave his cousin a smile. It's also very discouraging for Diaz, who's known as a good puncher, and he's landed plus shots on Navarrete to no avail. He's got no reaction from Navarrete except when he's gone to the body. So it leaves a fighter like Diaz searching for answers while the long arm Navarrete is punching from all different angles. Tough spot for Diaz. Andre's card is dotted with damage to Diaz. The three knockdowns, you got a 10-7 eighth round with two knockdowns there. 10-8 fourth round with the knockdown there. 10-8 seventh round with the point deduction for hitting to the back. 88 to 79. So what you're saying, Tess, is, is that Diaz needs a knockout to win this fight. And how. I don't know if it's a good thing to let Navarrete recover. Got a couple more rounds, and I'm sure he's going to get real busy with those hands well, in the just, next couple of rounds. Just pulled the trigger with the right hand up top, and Navarrete just got away from him. Hands were down, and that left hook came in. Navarrete got a chin on him. What did he say to you when we met with him yesterday about not being hurt? He said he's never been hurt. He's never been down. And he's a young guy. You know, he can take a lot. Mm. Dre, I got a question for you, my man, partner. Can anybody at 126 right now beat this fighter that we're seeing right now in Navarrete? It's a tough guy to beat, Tim. It's a tough question. I, tough question to answer right now, but he's going he, to be a tough out for anybody. It's going to be a tough out for anybody. And I, and I like what Navarrete said. It's something I always said in my career. He said, if I get beat, it's not going to be easy. Dre, I'm going to go on record and say that there's no one at 126 pounds. If he finishes this fight on his feet, can beat Navarrete. Championship rounds here with the WBO Featherweight Championship on the line. Emmanuel Navarrete has been in complete control. Christopher Diaz has had his moments. He's been firing. He's been game. He's been willing. But Navarrete, so unconventional, so powerful, so long, and he's done serious damage. Diaz, six minutes to try to find something.
your DS, you gotta you gotta let your hands go. You gotta use every bit of your experience to try to get in range to let it let a shot go that Navarrete doesn't see and hope that you can hurt him, buzz him, and get his attention, even though you haven't heard him to this point. But sitting back and just let Navarrete tee off at will is not the answer. Well, the biggest issue is, is he's moving right now, but the biggest issue is when he sits in front and he puts those earmuffs on. That's the problem that he has made. Let's take the tee off on him, go down to the body, and then come up with the uppercut. See, the biggest thing a lot of people don't really understand is, is that positioning is very important. And the most important thing is your head positioning. Where you keep your head. If you keep it in the middle, it's going to get knocked off. If you keep it off to the side, you're in a safer place than keeping it directly in the middle. See the blood coming from the nose and mouth of Diaz? He's a, looks like a beat up fighter dressed. He took huge damage in that eighth round. Huge damage. Just got hit with three punches on that same nose. Yeah. He's absorbed 202 punches, 186 of them are power shots from a powerful featherweight. Want to let everybody know that at the conclusion of our championship fight, we're going to go over to the ESPN app, ESPN Plus, for extended co coverage of this spectacular night side and Navarrete returning fire. That's some kind of courage right there from Diaz that shows you how bad he wants this fight. He wants to win this fight. He hasn't given up. He doesn't know how to give up. That's not who he is. Look at him getting right into the furnace with a guy who has put this kind of damage on him. There is a love and respect between trainer and fighter. This sport asks certain things. These are the participants, not just the fighter. You guys kind of calmly telling Diaz, I have faith in you. There's no pain, there's no pain, there's no pain. Oh. As he's looking at that face filled with pain. And look at how Diaz responds. And look at how Navarrete is willing to dish more out. As Diaz is moving forward, lands a right hand. And he's got Navarrete against the ropes. And Navarrete says, we can do this all night long. 12th and final round, title on the line. How tough is Diaz? This is some hard test. This is hard. A lion's heart. That's what we're witnessing right now. Navarrete continues to go to his head. Diaz continues to snow. Plow forward and just and look for something. Navarrete in complete control. Having dominated, scored three knockdowns, up huge on the scorecards. And yet Diaz is landing some right hands here in this 12th and final round. Desperate for a knockout. Tessin, you're wondering how Diaz is able to do this after taking those shots and being down. I'm going to tell you right now, it's emotion. He's thinking back of how hard 
father took him to get here. He's thinking about his kids. He's thinking about everything right now in his life. Strip it down to its pure essence. It's a magnificent sport. Making tough decisions and dealing. has decided something here in this 12th round in the game. Tess, this is special, Tess. This is special stuff we're seeing from both guys. Navarrete digging with body shots. Come on, bro. You got it. Oh, Are you kidding me? What is happening right now? It's a long time to do that. Final 15 seconds. Now that I take closing oh in, defending his title, and Diaz on wobbly oh legs. How much can you possibly oh take and still be giving? Oh, never got to get in there. Him badly, get in there. Damaging him so badly. That's it, fellas. Got the end. Destroyed a turret.
Ooh. You'll be okay. Ooh, nice right hand there from Henry LeBron, the southpaw fighter out of Aguadilla, Puerto Rico. And given the layoff from LeBron, a slow start is to be expected. You can be in the gym, you could be doing road work, all the different things to train and prepare. But it, it feels foreign when you've been off as long as he has to take off that road, put those small glo gloves on, and dance under the lights. A lot of times with the southpaw, you look for that power left, but LeBron really has a very powerful whipping right hand that has helped him put down nine of his 13 Most opponents. You see the first warning from referee Jose Covian about what tends to happen with a southpaw in an orthodox fighter, that battle for the front foot position. Yep. Getting your foot because Rojas, yeah, because Rojas has been active, you would expect him to be a little bit more busier in this right. first round. Giovanni Santillan, this is his hometown. He's comfortable here, but he's also comfortable fighting at 147 pounds where he sees a big future for himself. Fighting in my hometown as a Coleman event is a good feeling for me. I've been working really hard. It's uh, motivating me to come out and give the best of myself. Training with Robert Garcia has been great. This will be my second camp working with, with that team. And, you know, everybody there is a great fighter. So it's helped me level up in my training as well. I've been sparring with Mikey Garcia. I've been working with Jose Ramirez for his last fight. And, you know, these are champions, and I'm getting a lot of experience by working with them and showing me gain confidence and knowing where I stand. In the welterweight division, I'm, you know, I'm ready to show everybody that I'm the next you know, contender, big contender. You know, I want to fight for the world title, you know, hopefully sometime soon, and fight bigger fights. And you know, tonight, I want to show everybody what I got, and I want to show the world that I'm ready for that, that shot. It's been seven years since he last fought in front of his hometown fans. Oh. Tim, that's good, but there's also some downside to well, it. Well, it's all about managing emotions. You know, when you're getting ready for big events, that's what it's always about. You know, controlling those demons that can enter into your mind right before you step foot on the big stage. So if Santian can manage his emotions, be calm. In this environment, he'll do well. Ooh, nice counter left there from Henry LeBron. More than anything, Rojas is a bit bewildered from the left-handed stance and the movement of LeBron. He's not dancing on his toes, but he's giving him a lot of looks with his hands and with his upper body, and he's punching off of those movements. And right now, Rojas is a bit confused. Rojas doesn't have a feint in his game. <laughs> you need to apply foot feints, upper body feints, especially when you're facing a, a, a counterpuncher and a southpaw at that. You're not going to be able to land your jab as often as you like. But if you're dropping feints and you're keeping guessing, then you can you can pinpoint a, you can pinpoint an attack. I would should say. Rojas trying to throw a combination, but the movement that Andre was alluding to, very effective for Henry LeBron, and not allowing those land, shots to land flush. Oh, nice left man. hand there from good shot right LeBron. There. Go ahead, Dre. Yeah, the movement is subtle, but it's effective. Nice move right there, just changing frames. No slot changes. Left, right, back down, and then he disguised the backhand. As soon as he went on that left side, pop, caught him again. And you can see Rojas getting the foot outside, and you can see also LeBron just letting him, allowing him to have control. Because well, that small sequence right there from Rojas, that's where he really wants to be. That's where he needs to be. He can't win a boxing match, you know, against LeBron. He's got to close the distance, sell out. He's going to get hit, but try to get his own shots through and hope that something lands. And not just lands, but he wants to start to wear down LeBron, who's been off. And if you've been active, which Rojas has, you want to take advantage of that. Your conditioning is up. You're familiar with being in that ring. You got to take advantage of that and press LeBron to try to get him tired and fatigued so you can get this win. And to your point, Dre, if you allow LeBron to fight at this pace, he can do this all night. You're allowing him to oh, think. <laughs> so you got to jump up on him. You know, you got to bring the intensity, bring the tempo, bring some volume to your game. Yes, you're going to get hit, 
but you also going to do some hitting yourself. A little bit of blood on the uh, left cheekbone of Manuel Ray Rojas as we listen in to Henry LeBron's He's trying to just line up one shot. No, no, no. He's there because you're, he's pulling back. And he's there for that shot. Don't throw it because I'm asking for it. Throw it when you find the opportunity. He's, he's coming with power shots. Did you feel his power? No. All right, then use your power shot. I need you to dig to the body. Don't pull back too far with your hands. See the small cut on the cheekbone of Manuel Ray Rojas. Referee Jose Cobian called it a laceration as he went over to let uh, the commission know that he saw it happen. You know, sometimes, fellas, especially when you got a lefty and a righty, we talk about a fighter closing the distance in Rojas. It looks easy on the outside, but it feels like a mile if you're Rojas because you see LeBron has good, good sturdy stance. He understands his distance and range and where to be. And you reach and you get caught and you feel like, man, this dude is a mile away and he's really not. Rojas has to trust his ability and trust the jab, come behind it and get close to LeBron. It's the only shot he has. LeBron is lining him up just as his corner is asking. They know that Rojas is going to load up trying to land one shot, and they believe that their guy is quicker and more powerful than he can catch him coming in. He's accurate, very accurate with his shots. Well, LeBron can pick Rojas off with that, that looping left and that straight left for the rest of the year if he wanted to. So Rojas has to make an adjustment and get close. <laughs> Look at the distance again, the control mm. that LeBron has. Very precise and accurate with his shots. Explosive. You could see that LeBron is thinking the entire time because Rojas is giving him the time to think. He's in total control in there. Well, and, and also, one thing that you may not see is that LeBron, anytime you get close to him, he ties you up. He doesn't like to work on the inside. There may be a weakness in the inside, but you got to find a way to get to the inside of LeBron. There he goes, the looping right hand from Manuel Ray Rojas. And even though it wasn't a power shot, he made him pay after he missed. Well, yeah, and that keeps and you thinking, Dre. Exactly, and Rojas threw the punch and tried to cover up at the same time. And that's a bad, bad sign. If Rojas is going to go, he's got to go. And whatever comes with that, he's got to deal with it. And, it, and again, no feints. Just no feints coming from Rojas at all. That's allowing LeBron to just line up and tee him off. Anytime he steps forward, BB, take that with you. He lands it right to the body, and then he gets clipped with a right hook from LeBron as he comes in once again with his hands down. He landed, he threw a feint first and then threw that body shot, landed it, then bring his feet with him, lunging forward and got clipped on the way in. Every time Manuel Rojas reaches, Henry LeBron teaches. <laughs> po poetry 101 brought to you by Andre Ward. That's Michael Jordan.
was Vincent Parra, who's been working with Manuel Ray Rojas for the past four years since April 2017. And his father was the former champion, Norman Bumpy Parra, the former California Bantamweight champion. So he's got a long history in boxing, does Vincent Parra. And I know Tim's asking for Rojas to throw feints, and that's not really who he is. That's right instructions, but that's not who he is, and that's okay. Rojas has to believe that what he has is enough. It's gonna get hit, but you're getting hit on the outside, doing nothing, so you might as well try to open up LeBron land your shots and start to start to get your engine going because right now Henry LeBron is on cruise control. See he got in the inside because he changed his rhythm. You can see that it just wasn't one shot. It was hot hot changed the rhythm up and he was able to slide behind that when you're doing feints when you're throwing feints like that foot feints upper body feints hand feints. That's what you're doing. You're disguising when you're going to attack. Good defense there from Manuel Ray Rojas as LeBron was trying to set up that counter left. Stop, stop, stop. Let me give you a perfect analogy. Major League Baseball. Pitchers. They're shooting the fastball straight down the middle. Then a the curveball comes. Then there's a changeup. You know, that variated speed is what confuses hey, 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 the batter. Oh, right here there was a pause. Rojas stopped and LeBron did not. Sharp. And now LeBron is trying to pick apart Manuel Ray Rojas. Break, break clean. Another mistake from Rojas. LeBron just unleashed an elacious combination. So now he's recharging. He's allowing him to recharge sitting back. When you have your opposition attacking you, stop, and once stop, he stop, stops, stop. he has to recharge. So that means you bring on the pressure. Oh, nice counter right there from Henry LeBron once again. The Punisher is getting punished, Gray. Mm -hmm. It was a good body shot from Rojas that snuck in there, but he did get caught as well. No, 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 no. Step back. All right, tonight's co main event features Giovanni Santillan taking on Angel Ruiz. Ruiz is coming into San Diego, and Manny Robles, his trainer, said, You better understand that you're the B side and bring it against Santillan. Es una pelea muy difícil, él va invicto, estoy en su casa y yo sé de eso, pero pues yo creo que soy una persona muy fuerte, soy una persona con confianza y técnicamente hablando también, entonces me siento demasiado seguro de mí mismo y muy seguro también de mi equipo que siempre me está respaldando y siempre tenemos un plan de ataque. Both guys have a lot of confidence in what they bring to the ring tonight. He's got six knockouts in his last 10 fights, but that one loss in his career was devastating. All right, let's take a look at the right hand of Henry LeBron here as a counter in the fourth round. You see how he landed this shot. There he is. That's sticking out right there. That's bait right there. That's what we call that. Beautiful high on the head shot right there. He looked for the uppercut, came around, followed up with the right hook as... Rojas was lunging forward. Nice counter once again. Now it's the left hook from Henry LeBron. And how he does that is he creates space with his legs. He took full step back and caught him when he was on the way inside, making him fall short. I'm in the corner of LeBron. I'm not pressing my fighter to get a stoppage. I continue to check in with him. How do you feel? You feel good? Keep boxing. Stay smart if the knockout comes, it comes because we really need rounds. That's what we need. If you're in the corner of LeBron, they need rounds. Yeah, and uh, if you're in the corner of Rojas, you need defense because he pulled straight back and got popped by a big left 
straight left from uh, Henry LeBron. Well, well, I think Rojas's offense is his defense. He's just not throwing enough offense. He's content with, you know, just being a catcher tonight. He's catching everything that LeBron is throwing. And it boils down to what is Rojas okay with? If he's okay with just getting hit and not getting his own punches through, then that's what it's going to be, and that's what it's been thus far. Stop. Stop. LeBron's skills is just too much for Rojas. I'm just, I'm just saying. His, his, his ability to control distance, know where he is at all times, being stable on his feet, sharp punching, quick, accurate shots like that, placed, left hook, right hook down to the body. That's the biggest issue that Rojas is having. And it's the slight movement that he's got. He's right there, and then he's not. He's Bro. not running, but he's not being hittable tonight. That's the thing about softballs, man. Very elusive. And when you have a good one that knows how to use his feet, just as well as LeBron, it's difficult for an orthodox fighter, no matter who you are. Look at that. <laughs> that beautiful work. He's getting cut off at the pass, is Manuel Ray Rojas. Always worry when a fighter starts to throw that jab and there's nothing behind it. And I'm seeing that from Manuel Ray Rojas. Like, he's putting it out there, but there's not anything behind that shot. And there he's getting clipped to the body and then a right to the head. Once again from Henry LeBron. It's just target practice for the Puerto Rican. I'm telling you guys at home, this is, this is fantastic footwork. Beautiful footwork. Bring Look at that, how he exits out of that corner, Listen untouched. Land a two-piece and get back in the center ring, control it. I would love to see LeBron with a better jab. He doesn't have a jab. He uses the jab as almost a range finder for his backhand. Nice swivel jab right there, right after... His attempt with the long uppercut, there it is. As you can see, Rojas is trying. He's trying to get to LeBron, but he's been stopped. It's called pendulum footwork. That's what it's called. Back, forward, back, forward. That's what he's using. Beautiful work, man. Professor Tim, class is in session. Manuel Ray Rojas against Henry LeBron leading us up to Giovanni Santillana against Ankel Ruiz. That'll be our co-feature, a duel of Southpaws. And it all culminates with the WBO Junior Lightweight title defense from Emanuel Navarrete taking on Joette Gonzalez, right here on ESPN Plus. Glad you're with us. I'm Bernardo Osuna alongside Timothy Bradley, Andre Ward, and Mark Kriegel at the desk. Told you, pendulum footwork. Watch him step in the counter. And they get out. See that little step back? Boom, boom. Look for the counter as Rojas lunged forward. Thanks to our director, Aladdin Freeman, for that overhead look. That illustrates Tim's points as now he gets clipped once again, does Rojas by the quick power counters from Henry LeBron. Henry, Henry, let go. That was good work right there. Yes, it was. I think Rojas is the perfect opponent for LeBron coming off the layoff, 14 month layoff. He's tough, he's durable, but he's not letting his hands go and he doesn't have the kind of offensive power or ability to push LeBron to a point that maybe he's not ready for coming off that 14 months. Yeah, even if he wasn't bewildered by LeBron's southpaw stance and excellent footwork, it's just he's only got six knockouts and 21 wins, so he's not a big puncher anyway. But he's extremely tough. Which yes. Is, which will give you rounds, which again, this is what LeBron needs. There's a reason that top ranks matchmakers are some of the best in the world in terms of developing fighter, and, and it's what you were illustrating right there, Dre, as 
We see once again the counter work from Break LeBron. Break just great work from LeBron. <laughs> and he's just showing a lot of different looks tonight. He doesn't look like he's been off for 14 months. So this tells me that even with the layoff, he wasn't really laid off. He was in the gym and he was working because you, you know a fighter who just got ready in eight weeks, who maybe has been off a year. So it shows in their performance and that's not showing on LeBron tonight. The other thing that's very notable is the way that LeBron is breathing. He's not laboring. I mean, he's in great shape. And the fact that he's in control even of his respiration as Manuel Ray Rojas is trying to find a way inside tells you just how hard he's worked under his uncle's uh, guidance, Orlando Gonzalez Sr. counter to the body again Tim. what LeBron needs to work on in the gym is what's next the what's next all right you landed the counter beautiful what's next after that go on to the next thing get on a different position a different angle and keep continue to work your hands that's how he's going to develop more stoppages and get more stoppages content with what you're doing. I'm good. He's got, he's got nothing behind those punches. We mentioned Joette Gonzalez. He will be challenged for a world title for the second time. The exact same world title that he lost uh, in the challenge against Shakur Stevenson. He's now the mandatory challenger after defeating Miguel Marriaga. He's 24-1, 14 knockouts, but he's got a bitter taste in his mouth in the way that he was handled by Shakur Stevenson in his lone title opportunity. Well, he wants to get that back. He wants to show what he's capable of doing. And he's in with a really talented champion in Navarrete. And if he can pull off this upset, similar to what, what, what I said at the beginning of the show, just like Barrera did against Prince Nassim, three to one underdog. Be a beautiful day for him and his family in his career. Bernardo, the reason Joette had that bitter taste is because he didn't just get beat, it's how he got beat. He got dominated and he got schooled. Just like we're seeing here tonight with LeBron and Rojas, fighters can take a beating if it's 50 50, 60 40, I got mine and you got yours. But it's demoralizing when your opponent gets his and you can't get anything back and that happens all night long, that's where that bitter taste comes from. So it's just interesting how boxing ability sometimes gets a bad rap, but that's really what most fighters feel. Not a hard puncher, not a guy that's tough. It's a guy who can take me to school and embarrass me. Andre, that's why you don't hear guys calling out Shakur Stevenson. He's an elite fighter with Possibly, you know, about after uh, he faces Jamel Herring, but he had to get the mandatory shot for Jamel to fight him too because Valdez stepped up a division so he wouldn't have to fight him. And he's gonna have, you know, nobody's saying, hey, I want that, I want that work. Everybody running from Devin Haney too, who's a, who's a pure boxer in a sense too. Same thing, I don't see anybody calling his number. It, but it's interesting though, even some of the toughest fighters in the game, once they have a couple tough tough losses or maybe one bad loss, what do they ultimately go back to? Boxing and fundamentals. Some guys choose boxing and fundamentals as a first option and not a last option. Ooh, Rojas has found the key, it's the body. He can tell now that LeBron doesn't like it downstairs. When you're going down to the body, you leave yourself open up a top. You got it. But Rojas right now has to take that risk and take that chance. And it could be a shot out, shutout in favor of Henry LeBron. The fourth round was the only somewhat competitive round for Manuel Ray Rojas, who's gotten to landed a couple of solid shots here in the seventh. But it's no time for Rojas if he wants to give it, get a shot of winning. It is. 
<laughs> nice change right there. Many nice fighters may never get a second shot at a world title. It was October of 2019 when he lost to Shakur Stevenson two years later. Joette Gonzalez is in the ring once again, trying to erase the memories of that and walk away a champion. And now, WBO featherweight world champion. The disappointment on the face of the Gonzalez family. It's definitely easier to prepare for this title fight than the last one. It was my first world title shot. I really wanted to win. I trained really hard, but it affected, you know, my performance. And this fight, obviously, I do want it. Being more clear-headed and not having, you know, mentally, you know, emotions in there, it feels a lot easier. No distractions, and I think I'm more prepared for this one. This opportunity is everything for me. It's now or never. And this fight's gonna be whoever wants it more. I think now that it has tasted that championship caliber, he's been there. And like I said, it's now or never for me. I haven't tasted that yet, and I need to get that belt. For Joette Gonzalez tonight, he has a chance to change his life. This fight is about redemption and fulfilling his lifelong dream of becoming a world champion. This is the eighth and final round between Henry LeBron, 13-0, nine knockouts out of Aguadilla, Puerto Rico, taking on Manuel Ray Rojas out of Dallas, Texas. And so far, it's been a total wash in favor of LeBron. Oh. Right. Loaded up with that right hook down to the body. Oh. See, guys, great boxing ability, great skill, great counter punching, great punch selection, just like that right there. It'll cause a tough fighter to concede. Rojas didn't give up, but he really gave up many rounds ago. He stopped trying to win. And that's what great boxing can do for a fighter. It's demoralizing when you know you can't do anything against a fighter like Henry LeBron. But LeBron here is punishing the punisher. Every time Ray Rojas makes a mistake, there's a right hook or a left hook that's there to discipline him. I'm not gonna lie, before I looked at this fight, I was I was kind of skeptical about the decision for LeBron to come back after 14 months off and fight a guy as tough as Rojas. And he's making this look it's easy work. Stop, stop, stop. No punches. Right. One and a half minutes to change the fight for Manuel Ray Rojas. But I don't think he's got any answers. He's got a jigsaw puzzle in front of him. And he's missing pieces on how to put it together. I honestly don't think that this is the best LeBron. Honestly, I really don't. I, I think this is a subpar LeBron. Even though he's looking good right now, I mean, conditioning-wise, he's been on 14 months. You know, you got to get a course, get a, get on get on track with having fights, you know, at once every four months, five months, get in the gym, continue to build your conditioning and stamina. But I think he's stop, better stop, than stop, what we're no seeing punches. tonight. I think the untapped potential, Dre, is what really should excite people about Henry LeBron. Yeah, he's got a lot of upside. You know, I want to see him after he's fought two or three times in a row and stays consistent. I want to see how he looks then. Well, what we see is that Manuel Ray Rojas is now bleeding from the right forehead, right above the eyelid, or actually above the eyebrow. It was a headbutt, as referee Jose Cobian called it. Let's see if this sense of urgency comes out in Rojas. Red means, I mean, Rojas means red. That means blood, but... Not even that could get him going here in the final seconds of this eight-round fight where Henry LeBron was in total control from the first punch of the night. All right, let's take a look at just how dominant LeBron was in his 14th professional fight. Physically strong, accurate with his combinations, but it was all the footwork being at the right place at the right time, setting up his offense, LeBron. But he's strong, it took him some time to come back, honestly, 14 months is a long time off, but he looked very impressive tonight against Rojas. Took everything away from him, made him fall short, 
dug down to the body. I think he hit him with every single punch in his arsenal. Well, every shot that LeBron landed was placed. He knew where he wanted the shot to land. It landed flush. And anytime a flush punch lands in the right spots to the head and to the body with those small gloves, it's, it's demoralizing, it's discouraging, especially when you try to return like Rojas did and there's nothing there. So Henry LeBron looked in total control this evening here. And LeBron is a fighter that all of his scheduled eight rounders now have gone the distance. And so he's a fighter who maybe needs to discover that killer instinct yeah. to finish a fight. I would say, I mean, he has one gear. Honestly, LeBron has one gear. That's what he showed tonight. Uh, but like I said, 14 months off. Let's see him with a few fights underneath his belt and see if he can pick up the tempo. Let's see if he has two gears, three gears. You know, accuracy was definitely on point. Um, great eyes, great vision. You know, he can make guys miss, make them pay. Great footwork. I'm just trying to see something <laughs> that I can pick on him about. Not much. <laughs> Not much to pick on him to get about. He looked let's, fantastic tonight. Let's see if the judges picked on anything on Henry LeBron's part or if it was a shutout. Only Mark Chinook has that answer. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds inside Pachanga Arena, San Diego, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Max DeLuca, Edward Hernandez, and Pat Russell all score the bout 80 to 72. For your winner by unanimous decision, Henry Moncho LeBron! And there is your answer. He landed a total of 31% of his punches tonight, 41% of his power punches. He punished the punisher tonight, and Henry LeBron improves his record to 14 and oh, as a professional. When we return, Giovanni Santillan makes his return back home, fighting in San Diego, his hometown, for the first time since August of 2014. Literally.
San Diego, California. What a beautiful place to be. And I'm glad that Top Rank Boxing on ESPN brings you our co-feature of the evening. It'll be Angel Ruiz right here at the Pachanga Arena taking on hometown fighter Giovanni Santillan. The emotions going through this young fighter's mind because he hasn't fought in front of his hometown fans in seven years now. And this moment is very special to him because he's a co-headliner in a world championship title fight card. About 2,300 people in the house. He was supposed to have people come and travel to see him earlier this year, but his fight was canceled. So Santillan coming right here and looking to do some damage. get on their feet for Giovanni Santillan. Man that Tim Bradley knows well because he sparred against them when they were both young pups. We'll see how he handles fighting at home as Mark Shook with the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, we return to the action here inside Pachanga Arena in beautiful San Diego, California. This is boxing. This is Top Rank, presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter, Mr. Bob Arum. This bout is scheduled for 10 rounds in the welterweight division. Our judges at ringside, Edward Hernandez, Dr. Lou Moret, and Alejandro Rochi. And the man in charge at the sound of the bell, Jerry Cantu. Introducing first out of the blue corner, he weighed in at 147.4 pounds, wearing red trunks with black and gold trim. He brings an impressive record into the ring, 17 victories with only one defeat. 12 of those victories coming by way of knockout. From Tijuana, Baja, California, Mexico, Angel Relimpago! Introducing out of the red corner, presented in association with Thompson Boxing. He weighed in at 147 pounds, wearing white trunks with gold trim. He brings a perfect record, 27 wins, no losses, 15 victories coming by way of knockout. Born, raised, and representing San Diego, California, Giovanni Gallo de Oro Santiago. Gentlemen, bring it over. Gentlemen, you are given your instructions in the dressing room. You have a good, clean fight. You will obey my commands at all times. Touch him up, good enough to both of you. The lightning strike against the Golden Rooster. Santillan, born and raised in San Diego. Angel Ruiz, born in Culiacán, the same land that gave us Julio Cesar Chavez, moved to Tijuana, where he used to go to the same gym as Chavez. And then he lived in Bell, California since 2017. This is his second fight fighting under Manny Robles as his trainer. And Giovanni Santillan also the second fight under Robert Garcia. And those two trainers have a great rivalry going. Southpaw versus Southpaw here in San Diego. You don't see that often. You don't see this often. Probably even more rare to see two southpaw power punchers as the crowd is already in Santillan's favor. Santillan's gonna show us tonight 
how strong his mind is because it's a gift and a curse fighting at home sometimes. He's got to feed off the crowd, but not let the crowd get him out of his game plan or ahead of his game plan. And that was the thing that I noticed Robert Garcia was telling Santi Yan. He motioned, like, look at all these people, and then he motioned to his kid to stay focused. Mm -hmm. Reese is going to come out aggressive against the Manny Robles, his trainer. He said he needs to understand, and we do understand, that he's the B-side. He doesn't have a promoter. He wants to open guys' eyes that he's a talented fighter, and there's only one way to do it, and that's to knock out Santi Yan. See, Santi Yan tonight, what he's doing is he's getting inside the punching power. Of Ruiz. That's where he needs to go. That uppercut hurts Santiago. Wobbly legs, but Ruiz not going right after him after hurting him. Already see a better Ruiz with Manny Robles. His defense is much tighter than it was when he got knocked out in the second round um, back in 2019. Along the road, you see him covering up. He's looking, he's more thoughtful, and, he, and his punch selection is really good so far. Santiago got to be careful of that overhand left of Ruiz because that's his power shot. You could see the intent behind those big shoulders of Ankel Ruiz. There's power, there's lightning in those shots. Because Santiago can't do that. He can't just throw his combinations and step straight back. Ru Ruiz is gonna follow him out with that big open left hand. He needs to stay low or angle his body out. Short right there by Santillan. He catches him with the left, but you see the high guard of Ángel Ruiz. Really strong jab by both men. All right, so for both fighters. There's a new man in the corner of both fighters. Mark Kriegel has more on the importance of these men. Both of these fighters were raised in the game and until recently trained by their fathers. Ruiz got knocked out a couple years back, then he went to Manny Robles. Santion didn't lose, but there was a disputed decision to Tony DeMarco. That's when his father asked Robert Garcia to take his son. I asked the dad, it was a difficult decision. He said, no, it wasn't about my ego. It was about my son's career. And I know we talk a lot about fathers and sons, but that right there, fellas, that should be the universal standard. It should be I the, agree with that. Uh, it should be the way all fathers think about their sons in the ring. And Andre, there was one shot here that left uppercut from Angel Ruiz, who which really was the best shot of the that first round. That was the best shot, and it was a perfect shot because he saw it and then he just let it go. He didn't try to load up. He saw that Santiago had his hands up, but he had he was open through the guard. Great recognition from Ruiz and great shot. Round two of our co-feature here on the night that will end with Emmanuel Navarrete defending his world title against Joette Gonzalez. For Santiago, it's going to be about... It's going to be about smart pressure. That's what it's going to be about. He needs to come behind his jab, keep a tight guard, and press forward because... The weakness that I saw by watching film was I did my own work. Ruiz does not like fight, fighting going backwards. Nice flurry from Santillan, but the defense of Ruiz is pretty solid. Yeah, a couple of those shots got through on Ruiz, but he's watching. He's looking for another one of those uppercuts to land, and he's very poised on the inside. Very impressive based on what I've seen tonight as opposed to the, the film study that we've been watching because Ruiz is, normally has his, his chin up in the air and I haven't seen that yet. He is watching, great defense, but what he does when he keeps those hands at home like that, Santiago is piling up points, looking for shots, but at the same time, Ruiz is putting his hands inside his pocket. Just like that. Santiago getting the crowd into it. Nice short left around the guard of Ángel Ruiz. And now, once again, it's Ruiz with a strong left. You can see the power when Ruiz lets his hand goes and lands. 
Man, what I'm seeing right now is Zantian being aggressive and just landing a straight left hand on the side of Ruiz's head. That's what I'm seeing. He's dominating right now on the inside. Santiago just letting his shots go. No shot in particular. He's just throwing and he's landing where he can. And even the shots that are landing on the arms in the guard of Ruiz, those start to pile up too. They start to wear you down over time. Nice body work down from Angel Ruiz. They're talking a little bit to one another. They sparred four rounds three or four years ago. Ooh, nice body shot there with the left from Ruiz. And Santillan always has something coming back. It's volume over power at this stage of the game. See, I like the blend of styles from his father, Santillan. Santillan can box. He also can box, but I like the fact that he can brawl too now. Training at Robert Garcia's gym. Look at that. That nice stick from Santillan as the bell comes and they both land after the bell. The crowd's excited here in San Diego, California, as is our own Tim Bradley. And Tim, the left hand for both fighters has been key so far. Ruiz hurt Santillan in the first round with the left uppercut, and in the second, it was Santillan landing that left. Yeah, it's all about creating space. You know, when you're in close clinches, nice little bump, bop, there you go. That's a beautiful move right there. The referee didn't see that push off right there. It's fair game. Using the shoulder just to create just a little space so he can turn over that short left hand in the inside. The veteran tactic, and that was learned inside the gym at Robert Garcia. It was Jose Ramirez's main sparring partner for the Josh Taylor fight. And for this fight, he was working with Mikey Garcia until he found out that he was going to be facing the Southpaw. And then Santillan started working with Southpaw sparring. So, Dre, you're forced to learn when you're in against elite level competition like that. Of course, I mean, if, if you're a true fighter, you know, because sometimes elite competition in a gym can run you off. It's not the case with Santillan. You're seeing the benefits with his skill, but also his mindset. He seems more sure about himself, and that's what you need if you're in the corner of Santillan tonight. Double right hook there from Giovanni Santillan, and there's a nice right once again from Ruiz, who answers and then digs to the body with the left hook. I really don't think Ruiz is trying to win that volume game that Santillan is playing. I think he's looking and processing what's happening while he's catching those shots. He just wants to land that one big shot. And I think he's willing to give up rounds to get that shot. Uh, I think that's a bad idea. That's a bad idea. As you can see, Santian already recognized him, what he's trying to do. Brought that hand up and made that adjustment from that right hook of Ruiz. That left hand is finding a home, and so is the right downstairs. And then you see that same shot that worked for him in the second. He's setting up behind the ear of Ángel Ruiz. So Santillán putting in work, efficiency, as well as accuracy. Accuracy, efficiency, and he's being patient and selective with his shot. He's just not throwing caution to the wind. Santillán is aware of what he's doing, and plus, he's defensively sound at the same time. You see that double left hand once again landing on the ear of Ángel Ruiz. Nice uppercut now from Giovanni Santillan. The uppercut is there for Ruiz. He just has to throw oh. it. He lands a right hook instead, does Ángel Ruiz. Dre, this fight has the feel of one punch can change it in a heartbeat. Yeah, that one punch will probably come from Ruiz if it comes at all. Santillan is building up points, and he could wear down Ruiz and get him late in this fight, but Ruiz is looking for nothing but a knockout right now. Is that right uppercut from Santillan? This spoke with Robert Garcia. This is a little bit different, Santillan, and his instructions were back this guy up. No combinations. Again, the different Santillan that we've seen before. Well, he was already more aggressive in his first fight with Robert Garcia against Cecil McCullough, June 26th. And he knows that 
Angel Ruiz, just like Tim Bradley pointed out, has no choice but to come forward because his game moving back is non-existent. See, this is technical aggression. At the same time, you gotta have boxing ability to know how to technically walk a guy down, come behind your jab, stay defensively sound, and that's what we're seeing from Santi. It's a blend between both styles. Giovanni Santillan and Ankel Ruiz warming things up for tonight's main event between Emanuel Navarrete and Joet Gonzalez. Ooh, right elbow, right on the nose of Ruiz. The referee didn't see that. He was on that side and didn't see oh, that. He saw it. That was thrown. He saw it. He just didn't call it. Well, he, he should have called there. that. But, I mean, everything's happening so fast, you know. And yeah, we have the privilege of slowing it down, but I'm sure in real time it looked like he came through with the shot. Well, it's, 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 it's creating space, like I'm telling you. It's, it's occupying. It's pushing off. It's framing. It's framing the shot. The uppercut. Robert Garcia telling Giovanni Santillan, continue to be intelligent, but continue to do your job. Round four of a scheduled 10-round co-main event here in San Diego, California. Ruiz grew up in Tijuana, which is just 20 miles down, right on the border, and Santillan was born and raised right here in San Diego, so the crowd is hype. Little trip there between the two southpaws looking to establish that outside lead foot. I think Santiago has done a great job so far of entertaining the crowd, pleasing his coach, and staying within himself and staying with the game plan. There was a nice right hand that caught Anke Ruiz either taking a step forward or off balance because he wobbled a little bit but recovered immediately. Just spoke with Manny Robles. What are you telling your fighter? He says, look for the counter, particularly the uppercut, right off the combination. As soon as he stops punching, is your set and done, fellas. Absolutely, and that's what Ankel Ruiz is realizing that he knows what he wants to do, but Santillan's giving him no choice or no space to do it. A nice lead uppercut from Santillan. But he worked it around first and then came up, man. Just creative combinations from Santillan. Looking impressive tonight. Body work from Anke Ruiz. But it's becoming few and far between what Anke Ruiz is doing here. Now he finally lets the three-piece go, but not much of it landed cleanly. Yeah, then he got recharged after that, too, because those are heavy shots that he's throwing. Santiago didn't use his speed. He's changing the tempo. The problem for Ruiz is that Santiago's not slowing down. In his mind, he's saying, okay, slow down so I can get my shots off. Double, and he's not. Oh, he's triple he's picking up the pace. That is correct, Andre. And this is a situation where Giovanni Santiago is growing exponentially right in front of our eyes against an aggressive southpaw power puncher. He's matching him and overpowering with his volume. Gio Gio is what the crowd is yelling for Giovanni Santillan. Nice counter right there from Ruiz, who just waited for the moment and struck like a cobra. But this has been a Giovanni Santillan round, and once again, he finishes it with Ankel Ruiz in retreat. Let's listen in to Ankel Ruiz's corner. Manny Robles will have the word. Hey, how do you feel? Speak to me. I'm good. Come on, man. You're, you're laying back. Come on, man. What's going on with that desire? Come on. You got to take the emphasis forward. Come on. You can't be going backwards. 
See Santiago doing what he's been doing all night, working the inside, but this time he took what Ruiz gave him, which was the right uppercut, not once, not twice, but five or six times. If Ruiz is not going to do anything different, Santiago has to keep throwing that same shot. Make me stop. Make me change and do something different. Ruiz just couldn't do it. We talked about the matchup between Robert Garcia and Manny Robles. Manny was telling us, I've got the upper hand so far in our matchups, and Robert Garcia is looking to get one back tonight with the hometown fighter Giovanni Santillan as he works his corner to perfection. Oh, nice counter right hand from Giovanni Santillan. Things are getting heated up here in round number five. Shot from Santillan switching things up. Still a lot of fight left, fellas. It's only the fifth round. And you saw Angel Ruiz put his glove together, inviting Santillan to get into a war. And this is where Santillan has to use his head. And on the inside, though, Tim, you mentioned it earlier on. He's been unstoppable. He's in connects a beautiful right upper that sends the liquid flowing. Absolutely, and he, look at his hand placement. It's on the side. And so Santiago put, kept his head on the actual shoulder of Ruiz. He was able to land those shots. Nice left hook on the inside that's been there all night long for Giovanni Santillan. Anke Ruiz trying to now connect two uppercuts, but you see the head movement of Santillan keeping him at bay. And now here comes the attack. You see the strength with which Santillan is able to keep him down. Did you see that? Yes. <laughs> That's why I mentioned it, Tim. That's head control. Wherever the head goes, the body follows. Head control sticking that lead arm out, guiding him where he wanted him. Mm. There's that one, two, once again from Santillan. Santillan just bullying Ruiz, to your point, Bernardo, on the inside. And that, that's also difficult to deal with. You're getting beat on the outside, mid-range, and then on the inside, I'm going I'm to bully you and show you that I'm the big dog. Ooh, what a nice way to turn and connect that uppercut. Caught a shift right there. <laughs> shift to one side, bam, right to the solar plex. Santillan is connecting with every punch in the book, and he's not being... Robotic, he's not telegraphing anything. He's keeping Angel Ruiz guessing every moment in the ring. Like I said before, fellas, the best I've seen, Santillan, not just because of what he's doing, but his body language. He seems like a sure fighter to me tonight. He knows what he wants to do, and he's executing. Right out of it. Angel Ruiz tries to answer, but Giovanni Santillan says, if that's all you got, you're going to take another two-piece before you go back to your corner. Tim, there was a lot to like from what Giovanni Santillan did here in round number five as we're at the halfway point of this fight. Look at this, what I'm talking about, creativity right here. You, don't, you usually don't see punches like this. Nice body shot inside, over the top. Under and over, under and over. Beautiful uppercut, you wanna lay your head down in the inside, Ruiz? Okay, I got some uppercuts for you. See, this is what happens when you keep your head, when you put those earphones on, put that high guard defense, you leave the middle exposed. Especially when you're leading forward, it's a perfect angle for an opposition, your opposition to land an uppercut. In this case, Santillan landed an uppercut against Ramirez. I mean, excuse me, <laughs> Ruiz. <laughs> Ramirez is hunting me again. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. I did. I just, I didn't want to put that in your subconscious, Tim. <laughs> well, Ramirez did spar Santillan for this fight, and you can see the quality sparring. Actually, yep. that was for the last fight that uh, Santillan and, and uh, Jose Ramirez had against Josh Taylor, but 
all that quality work inside the gym, it really makes you a more aware fighter. It makes you a more focused fighter because you cannot afford to make those mistakes in the gym. And it's muscle memory when you come into the fight. It exactly right. forces you to step your game up, Bernardo, or you'll get ran out of that gym or just get beat up from day to day. And you got to make up your mind that, hey, I'm not going to sit here and just take it. I got to raise my game to compete. And, that, and that's what Henry, it looks like Henry. Santiago's Stop, done. The best thing that I heard in that meeting yesterday was he said that coach Robert Garcia told me when I was getting in the gym for the first time, he said, you want to be the best one in here. That's your job. You want to be the best man in there. He said, we're a team, but you, but we're all competitive. So you want to be the best guy in here. And when you have that type of attitude, sometimes that's what a fighter needs. Somebody else to believe in him and the different voice other than his father who had been with him from the beginning to give him that boost. And you can see, Dre, just how much that has helped his confidence, his body language, and his execution. Well, it was the right recipe at the right time for Santiago's career. And to Mark Kriegel's point, kudos to his father because it's an extremely hard thing to do to detach yourself from being the lead guy and to step back and allow your son to work with someone else. But it's paying dividends for Santiago thus far. Absolutely. We can see the difference that Robert Garcia made, but none of it could have happened if his dad wasn't willing to relinquish control. And more fathers need to take this as an example as Ruiz lands a solid right hand. Now he digs to the body and the top of the head. This is probably the best moment we've seen from Ruiz since round number one. And yet, there's always something coming back from Santillan. Everything Ruiz does, Santillan has an answer. <laughs> and Ruiz tries to answer, but Santillan has another answer. And there you see the frustration in Ruiz trying to move Santillan and, and push and bully him back because that's exactly what he's been a victim of the entire night so far. Not both guys digging to the body. See, a lot of time, shot a lot of time guys want to wrestle back, but that wears you out. Just stay relaxed. Keep your hands tight. Be tight on your defense. Don't get complacent, but stay relaxed. Let them throw you around. Ooh. Nice right hand there from Beautiful shot. Will that mill his momentum here moving forward? Ruiz has been getting outclassed, but he's still fighting back. He's got that high guard. He ate a shot, but he gave a shot of his own and landed a right hook behind it. Right jab that barely touched Santillan. Straight left that clearly touched Santillan and a grazing shot that also hit Santillan. Good sequence from Angel Ruiz. Just not enough of that type of offensive power. Overlooking our, or looking over our fighter meeting notes, Angel Ruiz was saying, look, Santillan needs a lot of uppercuts, and I've been working on that. I was working on attacking all the time behind my defense and counterpunching. It's been the uppercut of Santillan that's been doing the most damage tonight. Look at the it's funny when, fighter, when fighters have history and they know each other. We saw this earlier in the night with cash flow. Sometimes fighters think, oh, the fight, he's the same way that he was the last time I saw him. And, you know, Santiano's just grown leaps and bounds. And we're seeing that here tonight. But I noticed something. Anytime you see Ruiz punch with Santiano, he has success. He needs to punch with him. So if he lets those hands go, he's a sharp puncher. Let his hands go right down the middle. Santiano's head's going to be right there. Manny Robles tells me that Ruiz hurt his left hand early in the fight. He says, listen, you got two choices here. You can throw the right 
or we can quit. I think you see what the answer is. And we remind you that he had issues with ligament damage in his left hand, had a medical procedure to fix it after his stoppage loss to Javier Flores, and that was in October 2019. He had the procedure done, and then he decided to have the cast removed by the doctor, broke it in the first sparring session, and still decided to fight. So Ruiz is tough, but with two hands, he couldn't deal with Giovanni Santillan. With one hand, it's a tall order. Look, at this is what we have to deal with being a fighter. It's not like any other sport. This is why boxing is considered the most the hardest sport in the world. Because we can't go back into the dressing room and get an x-ray on my hand. We can't stop the fight. Either you want to quit in the corner or you continue to fight with a broken hand. And he's throwing it. He's throwing caution to the wind and saying it may be broken. Doesn't matter to me. I'm going to hit you with it. There's that right hand from Ruiz. He's still throwing that left uppercut. Stop, 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 stop. Two steps back, two steps back. Let's go. That's some great reporting work from Mark Kriegel getting us that information and knowing how hard it is Ooh. for corners to be honest don't about stop, these things. Stop, but stop, the left hand from Giovanni Santi are shaking Ángel Ruiz. Just steady, steady shots from Santi He's raining down uppercuts, straight lefts, body shots. And Ruiz just doesn't have a lot of answers. And if the left hand is hurt, obviously that's putting him in a tough spot as well. You see the left eye of Santia now uh, getting not only a mouse, but some inflammation as is the right eye for Santia. But nothing to worry about, it would seem. And the right hand of Angel Ruiz now starting to be let go because that's all he's got. Let's listen in to Manny Robles and Angel Ruiz. Good job. Only three rounds left. How do you feel? Did you hear that? Let's go. You're just standing there. Come on. Move your waist. Don't get punished. It's not necessary. You can do this. Come on. Don't stand there. I want you to look for that counter. Let your hands go. Pop and then move. I know your left hand hurts, but don't think about that. You have two options. Do you want to stop this? No. Let's go. You saw the uh, California Commission official come up and ask Manny Robles if he wanted to stop it. He says, no, neither did San, uh, Angel Ruiz. So we're here in round number eight, a scheduled 10-round fight. Bernardo Osuna alongside Timothy Bradley and Andre Ward. Mark Kriegel doing great reporting work tonight. Listen, corners. I've been here before, okay? I, I fought with broken ribs, hands. You got to make a choice, as you can see. Ruiz has made the choice to stay in this fight. You got to understand what's at stake for Ruiz. He don't have a promotion, a promotional contract. He doesn't have a promoter, anybody backing him. This is his opportunity. This is his shot to get a promoter on his team to be able to make some serious money. And this is a chance for Santillan to prove that he needs to be considered among the best at 147 pounds to be elevated into the rankings. And that's exactly what this fight means for the hometown fighter, Giovanni Santillano, continues to press forward. And Angel Ruiz trying to get busy with that right hand, but there he gets punished with two lefts. I think Ruiz at this point, fellas, is trying to look for a way and find a way and search for a way to survive these next two and a half rounds. Man, he got to continue to fight. That's what he got to do. He got to think about his situation. That's what he has to think about. He has to forget about that hand and fight. What he can't forget about is the defense because Giovanni Santillan is throwing everything at him and most of it is landing at this point. This is why your lead hand, whether you're a southpaw or right-handed, is so important developing your jab because if you lose a hand, you can win a fight with a jab if you've worked it and developed it and it's a skillful, knowledgeable punch that you that you use. If not, it's very, very difficult to win a round if your backhand is, is, is in there. Big combinations there from Giovanni Santillan. So Ángel Ruiz did what he needed to do. He stepped on Santillan's hand and trying to land a couple of shots. 
when he was knocked out, that's exactly how the opponent did it to him. Stepped on his foot and put him away. And you see the uppercuts from Giovanni Santillan. Ruiz has only one option, to land a huge right hand here over the next six minutes and 40 seconds. Mm. Santillan just putting in work. My man put his hard hat on, brought his lunch pail, and he is putting in some overtime. Yeah, that's a blue collar performance from Santiago all the way. Mm. This is a flurry, and the referee's gonna have to take a look at Anke Ruiz in the next few seconds because he just can't allow him to take these huge shots with nothing coming back. It really is, but he's doing it so smooth and so quick, the ref is not recognizing it. And the combinations right here at the end of this round really got the ref's attention, and I'm sure it got the corner. Matty Rogers got his attention as well on if he should stop this fight or not. Yeah, the uh, commissioner was looking on, and the referee, Jerry Cantu, went over there to take a look himself because he did not like what he saw at the end of round number eight. Just the number of punishing shots adding up and piling on from Giovanni Santillan, who's looked the best I think he's ever looked at the profession tonight. Well, it's gonna be a long six minutes for Ruiz right here. I think that hand has had enough, and he's taking a lot of punishment. He's still trying to bite down and get through it, but he's looking shaky in spots now, whereas early in the fight and midway through the fight, he didn't. I think Santillan needs to keep pouring on the punishment to try to get that stoppage in front of his home, home crowd. Yeah, he's got to keep that left hand up just like he did there because the only shot that his opponent has is a right hook. But man, those uppercuts from Santillan continue to do damage. I think Santillan is getting close to that stoppage. He lands that right shot and then follows up. And guys, let's give Ruiz a ton of credit for the courage he's showing so far tonight. On this fight card, we've had several fighters come in here, starting off with Daryl Jones, and then it was Juan Mendez who took some serious punishment uh, on this card and gave their opponents all they could handle. Same thing here for Angel Ruiz, who is still game despite the hand injuries. Yeah, much respect to Ruiz. I don't think people realize how easy it is to check out and just give a little look to the trainer to make him stop the fight instead of going through everything Ruiz has gone through in this fight. So you're right, Bernardo. Much respect to Ruiz. Yeah, you see the damaging shots once again from Giovanni Santillan. It's that instinct of it's either you or me. Man, we modern-day gladiators. That's what we are. That's what fighters are, modern-day gladiators. He's fighting through the pain right now. He's doing well this round as well. He's having his moments. Look at him. That right hook, that's the only good hand he's got left. And Akin Ruiz, he's digging deep. He's thinking about being in the same gym as Julio Cesar Chavez. And the great Mexican legend calling him buff guy and saying, come on, you can do this. His father was a fighter. And now he's got Manny Robles in there guiding his career. But Santillan is just proven to be on another level tonight. If I'm in Ruiz's corner, I'm telling him to go to the body. I want those hands to come down from Santillan. So that way we can set him up for something over the top. Keep hitting his body, son. That's what I'll be screaming. There's only 
one round left. We're not winning this fight. You need the knockout. You need to go look for it. Close this fight with dignity. Come on, be strong. You hear me? Close your guard, but leave it all in the way. Tenth and final round of tonight's co-feature in San Diego, California. Hometown fighter Giovanni Santillan fighting here at the Pachanga Arena in San Diego, California. He's giving his fight fans a lot to cheer about, and they're with him right now. Angel just got caught there with the left, and then a three-piece from Giovanni Santillan, who wants to close the show. Santillan pouring it on here in round number 10. Santillan is not listening to his corner. He's taking chances. Ruiz still has a big right hook. Spoke to Manny Robles. He said he gave no thought, nor did his fighter, of stopping the fight. I don't think he's seriously hurt. I did tell him he needed a knockout. Move it ahead. Nice right hook there from Ruiz, answered by a two-piece from Santillan. You can see the fatigue on Angel Ruiz, who is just looking for a way to finish this one minute and 40 seconds on his feet. Mm. Big flurry from Santillan, and Ruiz trying to answer. Mm. Double right hook there from Santillan. So you Here could, comes Ruiz. So you can tell that the hand of Ruiz has gone numb. Now he's using it. That's what happens. You hurt your hand, it goes numb. And then you're able to use it again. Nice right hand from Giovanni Santillan. Now Ruiz trying to do some damage with the only good hand that he has. As he also lands the left. It's all courage and heart from Angel Ruiz and Giovanni Santillan. He says, let's finish this fight the way we started it. Going toe to toe, and I'm gonna get you or you're gonna get me. Santillan showed that he wasn't just mentally focused, but that he's in great shape tonight. He never faded, he never needed a second win. His first win was enough. He's been pouring it on all night long. And there's no better way to close this fight than to let the fans take it home. There you go, the crowd is on its feet as both fighters meet in the center of the ring and show sportsmanship after what was 30 minutes of non-stop action, Giovanni Santillan put on the performance of his career in this duel of Southpaws against Ankit Ruiz. And Tim, they deserve the standing ovation. Oh, absolutely. Both these guys fought with a lot of heart tonight. Santillan put on a sensational performance. He got my attention. He got my attention. I believe that he's a, he's a threat in the welterweight division. Believe that not, Santillan is a threat. He has creative combinations, he has good speed, he changes his rhythm up, he's a southpaw, he's a big southpaw at that. He can pressure you, he can outbox you. There's a lot to like about Santillan, and he's a new fresh meat, I would say, at welterweight division.
he put on a great performance tonight. He earned everything that's coming his way. And, you know, there's no pressure like fighting at home. It's different than any type of pressure getting in the ring. But there's also, there's no joy like getting the job done, pleasing the people, and then hearing that last roar before you exit the ring and go celebrate with your people. We talked about the fact that getting into the ring in front of your hometown crowd could be a blessing or a curse. Well, tonight, it was all love for Giovanni Santillan, and he earned every second of that acclaim. L listen, all action from the start, from the very start. And I knew this fight was gonna be a sensational fight because when you have two cell phones, let me tell you, somebody gotta get aggressive. And it was tonight, both guys got aggressive in spots. But Santian showed that he's levels to this game. He showed that the work that Robert Garcia's has been paid off, has paid off with this performance tonight. Beautiful uppercuts, beautiful left hands over the top, good movement. He was responsible with his defense as well. Just a sensational performance by Santian. It's a great feeling when, you, when you're a new team and you guys are trying to improve and grow and everybody's watching to see if the, ma if the relationship is going to work and then you start to pay dividends and bear fruit of that relationship and that's what Santiago and, and the Garcia team they're doing right now and it's only been two fights I'm looking forward to seeing more from both from these teams. Did Robert Garcia guide his fighter to a victory over a Manny Robles fighter Mark Chinook with the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside Pachanga Arena, San Diego, big round of applause for these two incredible warriors. After 10 rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Edward Hernandez scores the bout 99-91. Dr. Lou Moran and Alejandro Rochin score the bout 100 to 90. For your winner by unanimous decision, from right here in San Diego, California, Giovanni Gallardo Santiago. The Golden Rooster could be the Golden Goose for San Diego, California. Moving forward, Mark Kriegel is with the winner, Giovanni Santillan. Giovanni. I covered that Tony DeMarco fight. Okay. It wasn't ancient history. That guy and the guy you are tonight, two different guys. What happened? Um, I, I learned a lot from that fight, uh, a lot. You know, um, I have so many people supporting me, as you can tell, that came out. And uh, after that fight, I knew I owed it. I owed it to, to myself and to everybody that's been supporting me, my dad, my family, my son, he's here. And uh, I knew, you know, this is what I love. I knew I had to work a lot harder. We made a, a huge change, started working with Robert Garcia. You know, that's a decision that my dad made, and I think it's been it's such a great decision for us. It was a great decision. Listen, anyone who's played any sport wants a night like this at home. What is it like? It's amazing. You know, it's amazing. It's something that my dad and I, my family, we've all dreamed about, bringing these big shows here to San Diego. And uh, it means a lot. It means a lot to come out with a win. You know, we put in a lot of work with Robert Garcia in the gym with. You know, all the fighters over there, I'm grateful for them. They push me every day, every time I come over there. You've been in this game a while. You really deserve it. You and your dad, Robert. Bernardo, back to you. Thank you very much, Mark. And yes, he deserves the acclaim tonight, and he deserves for the fans to give him the love that he earned. How hype were the fans? Well, you heard them. But how hype was our very own Timothy Bradley here at the end of this fight, asking the fans to get up off their seats. No, Tim's not trying to fly anywhere. He's trying to get the crowd to give these guys their Come due. Come on, man. That, that's what it's about, honestly. I mean, these guys, they put it all in the ring. They showed us where their hearts is at, baby. All right, well, we'll see if Tim gets just as excited for our main event, Emmanuel Navarrete, when he takes on Joe Gonzalez in the second defense of his junior lightweight title. Or featherweight.